Live from San Francisco, California, The Cube, covering Mark Logic World 2015. Brought to you by Mark Logic. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching theCUBE here live in Silicon Valley for Mark Logic World 2015. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise and report on all the action, talk to the executives, talk to their customers, find out what's going on, share that with you. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Kelly, big data analyst at Wikibon.org, research firm. Go to Wikibon.com, check out all the action. Our next guest is Chet. Chad Chatfield, National Practice Manager and Senior Architect at Avalon. Welcome to theCUBE. Hi, thanks for having me. So, putting all this stuff to work is, is, is the hardest part of when you have an engine like Mark Logic and cloud and mobile mm -hmm. just exploding on the landscaping, forcing people's hands to actually move faster. Right. <laughs> it's like, pave the roads, get them cars on, get them, I mean, a lot of pressure. Right. So putting it into action. So, got to get your thoughts. What's your current view of the of the marketplace right now in terms of where the pressure points are? Is it top line, consolidation, developers, all of the above? I, th I think when you start talking about technologies like Mark Logic, there's somewhat of a fear to kind of get over to the edge and embrace new new NoSQL technology. Um, so the the barrier to entry is how how do we actually support it? How do we grow it? How do we limit cost of ownership? And so if you can if you can slowly ease in clients and get some small wins and small successes and go against the, the legacy, we have to have an oracle or something that actually is going to come in here and, and solve this problem. If you can get over that, then I think that it paves the way and it clears the path to actually have a much easier solution and implementation. I was going to say, how have you seen that evolving, I guess, over the last several years? You've been a, a partner with MarkLogic for a number of years now. How have you seen that relationship that companies have with their legacy systems evolving in terms of being more open to adopting new approaches, whether it's Mark Quadric or some, some other new uh, so we, big data approach. How's that evolved the last few years? It's become a lot easier. So as, as NoSQL has risen in popularity, it's, it's become a lot easier actually to have those initial conversations. Four years ago at Mark Logic World, we had Fortune 100 companies saying, what is NoSQL, why do I need it? And now we have, we need NoSQL, but we're not sure, sure how to actually apply it. Mm -hmm. So those conversations are much easier. With the advent of semantics and the notion of that being included in Mark Logic as well as other engines, how do you actually apply that technology in addition to a NoSQL solution? That's the new challenge, but there's a huge opportunity there to leverage legacy systems and provide that with a semantic solution so you can get business value out of your existing data. Let's dig in a little bit. What, what is that value that's, that's sitting there waiting to be unlocked when you start to apply semantics to those kind of legacy systems? When you deal with Fortune 100 companies, generally they have systems throughout. So one of them that we're dealing with today has 70 different systems that are uh, going into their supply chain. And so they're not going to go rewrite 70 systems. They want to leverage that existing data that's sitting there. So by taking new approaches like semantics to tie those legacy systems in to provide a unified way of looking at their business value chain across there, they're, they're able to leverage those technologies it's, it's a hurdle to get to that because it's hard to describe what that technology is and how it works, but once you actually have that small success win and, and you show that success, it, it spreads like wildfire. Well, so help me understand, so how is that, so the idea of bringing data from multiple systems together to get a kind of a consistent view, sounds like kind of the EDW idea that we've heard about in the past. How has MarkLogic changed that paradigm? So, in the past, you could take an ERP or supply chain software, something like that. Um, you could also take a master data management approach, of do a virtualization layer and have the data all flow through that. You flip that on its head a little bit, and instead of talking about how do we customize rows and columns to actually fit back out, you start talking about things semantically as, I have a product or I have a marketing material. And then when you start think, dealing with items at a concept level, it gets rid of all the different table relationships and everything else associated with it. It's easier to actually describe and bring systems on board. Mm -hmm. And then what ultimately does that enable companies to do that they couldn't do before that's going to drive even more value? So, so there's two things. Companies are looking for how do I become more efficient mm -hmm. and how do I find existing revenue streams and data that I may have. Using technologies like that, you can find tons of efficiencies. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to go order this, the asset that I own from another company. That's a, it's a waste of money because I could not find it. Uh, the second piece is I have all this data that I could repackage as a new product mm -hmm. that unlocks it by using those technologies. Well that's a really interesting one. The, the idea that 
companies that maybe were not in the quote unquote data business can now start to be in that data business where they're exactly. pack packaging up data solutions. Um, and that could be you know cross vertical industries. So it's really uh, opening up a whole new lines of business jump. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think I mean one of the things that we hear is applications are driving infrastructure. DevOps, we were just at the Amazon show yesterday, and it's almost like a cult. Right. Amazon. <laughs> okay, it's like it's so amazing. But then you bring it to the enterprise, you know, we were speculating on theCUBE that it might not be as easy to roll into the enterprise with your tanks and your army because there's a lot of little things you got to do. Right. So what are those things that the enterprise need to be truly like an Amazon, fully frictionless, agile, elastic, and have that kind of integrated stack? MarkLogic has a lot of that going on for it, and has the enterprise goods to go with it. So what are, Mark, what is MarkLogic doing that's different than say an Amazon or public cloud or other provider? So, from the perspective of Mark Logic, Mark Logic is different from a lot of the other technologies on the market. Is that with other other items, you have to piece together parts to make a holistic solution, which is not always a bad thing. You know, different segregations of what should be here. Search here, no SQL solution over here. What Mark Logic brings is the ability to do it all in one product. So, if you want to do semantics, you want to do bi-temporal types of things, all of those kind of things come packaged inside Mark Logic. So it allows you the ability, instead of having cost of ownership and support across multiple different platforms, that you can do it in one single one. So some people choose to do that. It's a lot easier from an enterprise support way to do that, but. So I got to ask you, guys, we're getting down to the wire here, getting the hook. Um, explain to the folks out there that might not be familiar with Mark Logic, what is it about Mark Logic that they should know about? That, they, that, that might not be obvious. Because there's a lot of camouflage around their value proposition. And they look like a database, but there's a lot of other stuff going on there. What would you say to that person out there in IT or in the enterprise about marked logic? What should, they, what should they look at, what should they pay attention to? So I, I, would, I would not say anything about Mark Logic at that point in time. My question would be, what are, what are your challenges you're facing? And nine times out of 10, it's we can't be flexible enough to adapt to our changing requirements. We can't pivot enough quickly in our, in our business. And then we bring in the conversation of a, of a tool like Mark Logic that enables that flexibility mm -hmm. and talk about it at that level, at the business level, not necessarily at the technical level, because once you get to the technical level, you get the glazed eye, you know, glazed eye look and everything else. Right. You get the glazed eye look as in Mark Logic's got great tech or it's been ch shoved down from the top or I, both? I think you get the glazed eye look because you start dealing with technical concepts that don't directly relate to business value. So you keep the conversation at business value and you let the technology actually enable that through yeah. small wins, you're good to go. So they have that, are they flexible enough from a product standpoint, do you think, to have that broad conversation? Absolutely, it, any vertical, almost any type of application that isn't pure just power aggregation, Mark Logic has a potential place or role in that area. Because one of the things that comes up in these big business use case conversations is, man, the guy up at the top jamming this down my throat, another platform, I got to get training, 10 year rollout, right. total gravy train for the companies rolling it out, my life is, my, I, gotta, I can't work, I got to work on the weekends now. Right. That's a mindset, I'm not saying that's the case, but yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a, that's a two decade mindset. Right, exactly. What's different now? So MarkLogic did a shift in the last couple of years to enable, to, to kind of reduce those barriers. So it used to be X query based. If you know how to program an X query, you're great. In our conversations with our client, they're like, we have no X query experience, so we're always going to be holding to you to actually supply that development. MarkLogic introduced Node, JavaScript, yeah. SQL, this made that barrier much easier to get across. The tooling is really good right now. I mean, you mentioned Node, you got Angular, you got all this new stuff going on, you got API based on JSON. Right. I mean, these are tooling, this is standard stuff. Right. So it's kind of like, not like learn COBOL or some exactly. weird language tied to some system. Yeah, and from, from the beginning to actually getting business value, the time is much shorter now than it was four years ago, three years ago. That's the equalizer. Ago. Right, exactly. It's not a gravy train because now you can create checkpoints. So, okay, great. Um, Jeff, anything else? Well, I mean, I want to give you an opportunity to tell us a little bit more about Avalon. Okay. Um, I'm curious, you know, from your perspective, you know, in the consulting business, uh, you know, you go through waves of, of technologies and you've got to kind of adapt as a, as a consulting firm. Tell us a little bit about your company, how you go about doing that. So Avalon's been in business for 13 years. Uh, we've been a part, like, partner with MarkLogic since 2009. 
we focus a lot in the areas of enterprise content management, enterprise search, and big data type solutions. The thing that we found that a lot of consulting firms actually lack is the ability to listen. And so we pride ourselves on our ability to actually listen to our customers and understand and not just provide a solution, but actually provide something that will solve a business challenge. Mm -hmm. So we've been pretty successful at that, even through the downturn, still here, so yep. pretty good. Well, the key I think you hit on is listen, listening and starting with the business problem and not exactly. the technology first. Exactly. So, exactly. Okay, we are here live inside theCUBE in Silicon Valley for MarkLogic 2014, MarkLogic World 2015. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back after this short break.